yeah, this is XR UK's open call for 100 days. It's our second one. Um, and I'm just super happy to see everybody here. It's just amazing. Um, I'm appreciating the time that people are giving to come here and learn about 100 days and ask questions of the team that are here. We, I think, should feel really proud and good for ourselves that we are all pushing in the same direction. And that is we are working towards an organised and fair ending to the fossil fuel era through citizen-led democracy and that is what i think is a brilliant feeling so thank you very much for being here um there's so many people here i'm i'm, I'm really uh, really astonished and, and, and heartened by that um and there's new people and there's rebels that i've recognized from over the years so it's really cool so i'm just going to explain a few little things about the 100 days campaign before we kind of get into the real nuts and bolts for those people who perhaps have just arrived into this space, although some of us will know some of this stuff already. Um, so yeah, 100 days, it is a countdown. It is a countdown to the most massive and inclusive expression of nonviolent direct action in the history of the UK, I'm hoping. We're going to invite 100,000 people to be there at Parliament Square on the 21st of April and stay beyond. Everyone is welcome and together we're going to make 100,000 people impossible to ignore. Our voices will be heard. This is going to be the big one, and I really think it's going to be a beautiful thing. So now is the time, you know, this is a moment we are here. More and more people are making the connections between the cost of living crisis and the climate and ecological crisis. And the public is seeing really clearly that the political system we have is broken and beyond broken. So we're going to make this 100 days, um, we're going to make this big one happen because uh, we know it's the right thing to do and the time is right, but we've made it even easier for more people to get involved by temporarily pausing our actions that target the public as a primary goal. And that came out with that we quit statement, which came out on New Year's Day. So this statement did two things. It starts to build a pathway to those who have previously been unable to join because of the unjust way that government and police targets marginalised people. Those that have the most to say about the uneven way that the climate crisis affects people in most uh, in the most affected areas they are often excluded and it gives xr uk and all rebels like me when we're talking to people out there on the streets and our friends family and buddies it gives us an answer to those people who say i agree with your message but not the methods now those people can be there too so this 100 day countdown period is the opportunity to mobilize 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 start those conversations and bring people in you know this is their moment this is their time to be heard and this is what we're going to be talking about today so we are here in the moment of whirlwind i believe we are creating one and we're going to be stoking it as hard as we can in the next 100 days the new year's we quit resolution you know that that message lit a spark in the press and you know i was out there speaking to the press it, you know everyone was very very interested and it started that national conversation and on the launch action uh, wednesday just passed you know we set out the intention for people to start bridging bridging those divides reaching out to those affected by the climate and ecological crisis but have not yet had their voice heard unite to survive that was the message and this is what's super cool we're on it now so this evening you're going to hear more about the journey so far kind of where we're at you know we're only a few days in we're going to talk about how the target of 100,000 people outside parliament on the 21st of april will be achieved we're going to talk about how to get involved we're going to give an update about what the next 100 days of actions will look like from an actions point of view we're going to give some details around the big one and you'll have opportunities to ask your questions as well so I'm just going to take a breather. So I'm rushing super fast. I'm kind of buzzing. Um, we have got a super packed agenda. We've got an hour and we're going to try and, and use it as best as we can. So I'm just going to quickly talk about how we can work together to make sure we can cover everything we need to. First of all, as I said at the very start of the call, it's really great. Everyone seems to be muted. If you can remain muted, that'd be really handy. That ensures that the team is not interrupted mid-flow and no one gets distracted. And it means that everyone can hear the important information. We're also going to ask, uh, and this is something that, um, you know, we want to be kind of as, as firm, but as gentle as we can. If you can use the chat only if you've got a tech or accessibility issue, or if you have a question about 100 days and the content of today's open. So if you have a tech or accessibility issue, 
please type in the chat. We've got a tech team and they will try and help you to figure out how you can engage with the call to make it make it possible for you to really get the most out of it. And if you have any questions about 100 Days and that content, please type them in the chat. We're going to try and uh, keep the chat clear of everything else that will allow our team to collate the questions, see which ones are the most frequent and much, which ones are the most important to, to answer and get out there because we're not going to have time to answer everyone's questions. That way we'll be able to get the most out of this Q&A session and we're going to get around to that about 7.45. So 100 days is this campaign spanning this movement, this ecology of, of, of organisations and beyond and there are lots and lots of plans afoot, lots of work going on, but we can't possibly cover everything in the time here today. There will be more open calls, so please keep your eye on op open for those. Um, one way of making sure you don't miss anything is to sign up onto the mailing list. Um, and if you sign up onto the mailing list, that's showing that you're thinking of turning up to April, but it's also keeping you um, with information um, up to date. And we're going to put the link in the chat for you there. And by signing up onto that, you're signing into that ticker, which is, is, is keeping track of how many people are coming along. And that's going to be super cool to see how that grows. Please, please, please also join the Rebellion uh, broadcast on Telegram. And I think uh, Ned is putting um, these uh, links into the chat. Um, the Rebellion broadcast on Telegram and the Movement broadcast uh, on Telegram as well. These, uh, so the Rebellion broadcast has daily updates. The Movement broadcast has information about talks, trainings, and workshop events. So uh, get onto those. That's really a good way of doing it. So you can also find lots and lots more information, everything and anything you need um, if you're in a local group that needs help to figure out what 100 days, what's going on, what to do. That's all in the Rebel Toolkit. And we're going to talk more about the Rebel Toolkit for those of you who've not heard of that. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may use it. But a link uh, for the Rebel Toolkit is also going to be put in the chat as well. And, um, yeah, just coming up, um, yeah, the other thing you can do is join the 100 Days uh, community communication platform on Mattermost. So 100 Days have got a special area on Mattermost. And this will help you to get to grips with any information that is available. Um, and, you know, you'll get the updated really, really quickly on there. Um, you can ask questions and there's, there's ways of getting involved on there as well. If you've not heard of Mattermost or you've, you've got confused by me talking about it, don't worry. We do have experts here who can talk through and help make Mattermost clear for you. So there's a link in the Mattermost in the chat there. So I think we're doing all right. Um, I'm checking that Ned has got everything, all the links that we've said there in the chat. Cool. Thank you so much, Ned. Um, and now I'd like to just call uh, our open call crew to introduce themselves one by one. Um, so everyone knows who you are. And if you can just say, yeah, who you are, where you're from and what you're doing here tonight. And I'll just quickly say, yeah, my name is Etienne. I'm a local group coordinator work in Nottingham. And I also do stuff in the Midlands. And yeah, I'm the host tonight. I'll pass over to Kat. Hello, I'm Kat. I'm from Lincoln and I'm here as part of the 100 Days team. Uh, I will pass to Frida. Hi everyone, my name is Frida. I'm involved in Exa Hackney in London and I'm going to talk a little bit about 3.5 tonight. So nice to see you all. I'll pass to Hazel. Hi everybody. So fantastic to see so many people here. Um, I'm, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, volunteer recruitment and getting you involved in lots of exciting things in the run up to 100 days. Um, I'll pass to Miranda. Hi everyone, I'm Miranda from um, Relationship Circle. I'm going to be talking to you about um, the allyship building work that we're doing and how you can help and get involved um, as a local group or an individual. And I'll pass over to Rob. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm uh, based in Uxbridge and I'll be speaking about the actions, uh, specifically the big one on April the 21st and around. I'll pass to you, Alex. Oh, yeah, I'm also um, from UK Actions. It's great to see so many of you here. So I'll be talking about um, actions leading up to April and how you can get involved in that. Thanks. Ooh, 
think uh, that is everybody. We've got a couple of people working on tech behind the scenes. And as I say, if you can please keep that chat as clear as possible, just if you've got tech and accessibility issues, and if you've got questions about what you're hearing and about 100 days tonight, that'd be really, really great. So I'm now going to pass without further ado to Kat, who is going to provide us an update on what's been going on in the 100 days campaign. Over to you, Kat. Thanks, Etty. Uh, I'm really pleased to be able to share some 100 Days updates with you. But first, I'd really like to start by thanking everyone for their continued feedback and participation and express that this journey is informed and inspired by that feedback. We will continue to share with you to develop and strengthen the existing plans together. It's important to remind ourselves that while it can be uncomfortable at times, uncertainty can be a good thing. Without stepping into the unknown, we will limit ourselves to our own imaginations. Having confidence and faith as we take risks for the sake of something greater than our separate individual lives brings new possibilities. At the same time, we are strengthened and sustained by each other. I'd like to speak to and thank the determined <coughs> in challenging circumstances, determined in spite of limited capacity and seemingly never ending hurdles. We acknowledge that there is always room for improvement. Nobody is perfect and it's important not to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Resilience and imagination is needed in order to meet the new ambitions and intentions, fostering new connections while staying true to the beating heart of the rebels who have made XR what it is today. So how's it going? At the time of writing, over 8,000 people have committed to attending, which means on day five, we have already reached 8% of our target. Steadfast work from committed rebels continues. The campaign steering group are doubling down to improve inclusivity, boost fundraising, evolve communication systems, develop mobilization tools and techniques, work in collaboration with sister movements, potentially supporting organizations and more. This is the moment that we need to make repeated calls for help. More roles are being added to the volunteer recruitment website. Please read and consider. You'll be hearing more about that later. Share a role with another rebel, take on something as an affinity group. And in your local groups, we're asking the crowdfunder now at over £20,000 to be on everyone's lips. A flyer put in every hand, a conversation every day, new ideas to strengthen local group networks, both to organisations and each other. Partner up with other local groups, twin or buddy up with new rebels to learn from and support one another, share challenges, all of which will be spoken about in more detail in this call. I'll hand over to Frida to talk more about that. Thanks so much, Ka. Can you all hear me all right? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about 3.5 then. Uh, so as you all know, we're trying to get 100,000 people around Parliament from the 21st of April, day after day. And we're not on, on our own. We're going to work with other organizations and Miranda will talk a little more about that, but that's still a pretty significant challenge. <laughs> So we all need to come together and work really hard on getting those 100,000 people together. And so outreach will be really, really important for doing that. And the 3.5 team are all about learning how we can do outreach more effectively, how we can invite people to come to the, uh, to the action in April and how we can then actually encourage them to turn up. So we like a good temperature check and hands up if you've ever done outreach before. Hands up, hands up. Anyone here who's done outreach? Whoa, so many people who've done outreach. Way. Well, you'll be so glad to hear that you can do lots more outreach <laughs> until April. So it's great to have such an enthusiastic audience. <laughs> um, so um, what's changed about 3.5 and how we do outreach is that Traditionally, we, we do this whole thing of that. We invite people to a talk in our local community, and then we invite people to get involved in their local group. And it's very community driven, which is amazing. And it will be impossible to get 100,000 people to turn up if we try to recruit all of them that way. Because I did some outreach yesterday in Hackney. I spoke to a couple of people about the action in 21st of April. There were a lot of people who were like, oh yeah, I could turn up to that. Um, I'm not sure I can come to your talk. I don't have that much time. I'm not sure I can get involved in your local group, but yeah, 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 I can come to something in April. So what we're trying to do now is to get as many people as possible signed up to join from the 21st of April around Parliament in London. They don't necessarily need to say, yes, I'm a rebel now for the rest of my life. They don't have to 
come to a talk or join every local group meeting, if they can just come to the protest in April, that's amazing. And that's what we're working towards. So you may ask now, well, how do I sign people up to the 21st of April and the days after that? Let me tell you how we can do that. So I'll share my screen. I hope that works. Everyone just shout if you can't hear me anymore or if you can't see my screen. So if someone just wants to be signed up for the actions in April, you just go to our website, extinctionrebellion.uk. You all know it. I'm sure you all go there on a daily basis. And you can see the ticker here, how many people have signed up already, over 8,000. You know, you can tell people about that. That's great. And then people can just fill in the form here and that's it. And then they'll receive loads of, well, not loads of emails, but a tailored email journey that will tell them all about what they need to know to join us in April. Um, so now you might wonder, oh, but we don't, oops, we don't just want to sign people up um, to this mailing list. We want to have people on our local mailing list as well. If that really confuses you, <laughs> ignore me for the next minute. But some of you might be thinking that because you know that you have a local mailing list and you want to stay in touch with the people who you sign up locally. As you will be aware, all local groups have their own sign up forms that they can use to sign people up to their local mailing list. So this one, for example, is um, XR Southwark email address. So all you do is you type in into your browser, joinxr.uk slash Southwark. And then you arrive on the Southwark um, sign up form and you can do the same with pretty much every local group. And you can sign people up here um, for your local group mailing list. And then there's a tick box here at the bottom that says, we're working to bring 100,000 people onto the streets of London from the 21st of April. Will you be there? And so you can sign people up here and they will still be counted on our ticker, but you'll also be able to contact them in your local group. And there is a print form that goes with that. So if you do outreach on the streets, people can just fill in this print form and there you go, you've signed them up for the 21st of April and they'll receive all the news they need. Um, so now you might wonder, where are you, am I gonna find all this stuff? Well, uh, 3.5 has brought lots of materials together that you guys can use uh, to make your outreach as effective as possible and sign as many people as possible up for um, the actions in April. There are two types of materials. There's a volunteer handbook and there's an organizer handbook. All of this, I believe, will be in the follow-up email uh, that you will receive after this call. The volunteer handbook is really focused on anyone who wants to do any kind of outreach, take on a few little tasks, and it tells you everything you need to know about the different outreach methods that you can use to sign people up in April. Um, the two that I would like to highlight here is speaking to your friends and family. It would be amazing if this is something you could bring up in all your local group meetings from now on. Every time you have a local group meeting, ask people to speak to their friends and family and sign them up for, to come at least for one day in April, because we know that our friends and family are more likely to attend an action than a random stranger we talk to on the streets. So this is the most effective thing everyone can do to recruit people for April. So bring it up, every local group meeting, invite your friends and family. The other thing that we found has been really effective, and I'm only going to talk very briefly about it now, is citizen survey boards. They are like survey boards you can use with stalls where people can sort of indicate on scales how they feel about climate change. And we found them to be really effective to engage people on the streets and then sign them up to your local group or the big one in April afterwards. Um, and there are lots, there's lots of guidance here on how to print them, how to make them. Um, Etienne loves them, so make sure to <laughs> make use of them. Um, did I want to say something else here? I don't think so. Let's have a really quick look at the organizer handbook. I know this is a lot of information, but bear with me. So the organizer handbook has all the information that you need as an organizer in a local group. So if you're the kind of person who prints the leaflets, who helps to build the survey board, who, um, you know, 
sorts your mailing list, those kinds of things, all the information you'd need as an organizer is in this handbook. Um, the things I would like to point out here is that we have leaflets now. <laughs> it's a big moment that everyone's been waiting for. There are leaflets now that we can print. You can find them here on this page. There are all the links to all the materials that are going to be listed um, later on in the handbook. So um, the leaflets are on Rebel Toolkit, which has been mentioned earlier. Uh, they look something like this. So this is a generic leaflet that any local group can just print out. Uh, the files are here. So it says, you know, the big one, Houses of Parliament from 21st of April, blah, blah, blah. And people can sign up by scanning this QR code or typing this URL into their phones. Uh, so you as a local group might want to individualize this leaflet. So for example, you might want to invite people to a specific event in your local area, or you want to use, I don't know, um, a different sign up form rather than the generic one here. So what you can do is fill in this form, form to request materials to be individualized. Um, and in there, you can, you can fill in this form, you can say which material you want to have indiv individualized and how it should be individualized. And then someone will be in touch with you, will aim within a day and they will email you the file that is individualized with your local group leaflet. Um, cool. I'm pretty much done. I think the only other things I want to say is um, that was a lot of information. And if you think that was of semi useful, but you, it hasn't quite sunk in yet, or you want to learn more about all of this, come to one of the 3.5 talks and trainings. Um, the 3.5 trainings calendar is linked to in the handbooks. We have regular trainings. So for example, next week, there will be a training on how to um, do outreach to people who are not English, native English speakers. And then in the following weeks, we'll have regular trainings for outreach volunteers and 3.5 local organizers, where we take much more time to go through all these materials in the handbooks and share learning and information on how we can do outreach as effectively as possible. That's me. I think I've talked for long enough now. Thanks so much for your attention. And I'm not sure who I'm passing on to next. So hopefully Etienne knows. I do know, Frida. Thank you ever so much. Um, we're passing to Miranda now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Miranda from Relationship Circle. There have been a lot of questions about the relationships that um, we're building. It's very um, positive. We've had a lot of warm responses and there's a, like a vast number of ongoing conversations with NGOs as well as grassroots uh, activist groups and things like that. Um, it is a little bit frustrating, but like the actual kind of details of a lot of the relationships we're building are not currently kind of pinned down. So that has meant that it is requiring a bit of pain to wait for like the announcements and to be really kind of open about where those relationships are. But at this point, as we're so close with some really great organizations, um, like, you know, so prematurely announcing anything might jeopardize those relationships. So it's in the best interest of, of the relationships to, to just, you know, move at the speed of trust. Um, in terms of like local group relationship building, that's a really important um, piece of the puzzle. Like uh, we have a training pack um, that supports local group alliance building, and we're also running a series of trainings. Um, the one there's one this week on the 19th, Thursday the 19th in the evening, um, and uh, there's an action network link going in the chat to sign up. It's about um, how to reach out to the trade union movement. Um, so we're encouraging local groups and rebels to reach out locally. I think I noticed someone had mentioned in the comments about how it'd be helpful to know who we're building alliances with sort of centrally because you can, that will help reach out locally. And um, that's absolutely true. But I would also recommend reaching out locally anyway, because if um, local branches of big organizations are kind of getting on board and getting excited, that will help add, um, you know, add reasons for the national organization to get on board. Um, so really encouraging local groups to reach out to local branches of big organizations, community groups, churches, parent teacher associations, uh, you know, all sorts of um, 
you know groups that exist in your community and so you can reach a whole cohort of people that way, uh, just through one conversation speak to the right person so for example you might speak to someone um in a in a school who's really well connected with all the parents is on the pta and you can bring loads of parents with you just by talking to that one person and then they'll go off and speak to the rest of the people in their community group um a cohort of kind of local organizing that i really encourage everyone to try and tap into as best as possible is the trade union movement so we've been looking you know in relationship circle about how you build links with the trade union movement um we're doing that we're putting loads of effort in that um but you know one thing that is can be in some ways tricky is that you know local like trade unions uh, is very much about the local groups about the picket lines there are picket lines all over the country um depending on the strike at different you know so it's really we're really encouraging in a big way at the moment while this um free energized trade union spaces is um doing great things and resisting um you know some of the more um repressive uh, aspects of this government we really encourage um you to attend picket lines reach out to local branches of your trade union um, and the training that we're offering on thursday is all about um you know how, how like go encouragement to go to picket lines to feel more confident attending picket lines um other ways to reach into local trade union branches uh, joining a trade union, um, you know, that is a, a hugely helpful thing that all local groups can do because we just, ca you know, we can't do that centrally. It's about showing solidarity. I don't know if anyone here has seen the film Pride, but it's a film about how um, this group, lesbian and gays, uh, support the miners formed and they went to support the miners' strikes in the 80s um, and the, the solidarity and the relationships that grew there. So I'd recommend that film. I recommend the training. Um, and be aware as well that the 1st of February is a big date for trade union organizing. There's a number of trade unions going on strike. So, um, yeah, that's one thing that I'd really like um, to grow in XR, just do, being on those um, picket lines as XR, not, not feeling like you need to hide and showing support. Um, so, yeah, please come to that training. And if you have any other questions in the chat, I'll be monitoring that and, and happy to answer that. And I'll pass on to Hazel. Hi, thanks Miranda. Um, and uh, hello everybody. Um, I hope you're I hope you're doing okay because there's a lot, a lot of information coming at you quite quickly. Um, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about online um, volunteering. So just to distinguish from what I'm talking about from what Frida talked about, um, you know, there, there might be many reasons why you can't or, or it's not suitable to you to volunteer with a local group. Um, for example, you might not be close to somewhere, you may have accessibility issues. Um, it, you know, for various reasons why it might not be convenient. So we have, we, I'm talking about online organizing. Um, uh, you may have a particular set of skills that you want to contribute, which, are particularly valuable to the movement. So um, there are two places. So this is like, this is really where we're doing the, like the, the core organizing at the moment. There are two places that you can get plugged in and um, find out about volunteering opportunities. I would absolutely love a big chunk of you, 143 people to come and uh, talk to us um, about how you can help um, and the first one is the place that um, was mentioned at the very start that Etty said we've got this uh, uh, Mattermost um, space you might hear us call it the online organizing space or the online community space or campaign space or something like that but it's a public space where you could come and talk to us there's a lot of community people in there um, that will help you find what you need whether that be information if we have it um whether it be you know um you're looking to volunteer but you don't really know where um we will help you if you come into that space so that's the that's the great place for finding your community and then the other um place to look for these kinds of roles is the volunteer website 
um, which maybe I could kindly ask somebody to drop the link into the chat. Um, and that's, um, that's basically a jobs board. So it's very dry. It's just a list of roles. But what you will see is that there's a whole load of roles that are highlighted in yellow. These are the 100 day roles. These are the really urgent roles. And um, I'm going to talk about a selection of them just to give you a flavor of what's there and also what we kind of we particularly need and particularly want to highlight at the moment. Okay, so um, the first one of these roles that I'm going to flag is an inclusion advocate. Now we have this campaign to date has sought and incorporated all of the feedback that we've been getting over the years from our marginalized communities. And it, it's extremely important that we, it is, um, as we've said a couple of times already in this call, that we maintain that focus on being as accessible as we possibly can. So um, we have a load of fantastic experience in the, the movement already. Um, we're looking for, for somebody from the BIPOC community, particularly to be a link between the Justice Steering Group and the Campaign Steering Group. Um, and I think that there's going up to be a link if there's not already in the chat to that role. I see Ned waving at me, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, so that I just wanted to flag that first and foremost, because now that we're getting into the detail phase, I think it, it needs somebody holding it. I mean, it needs somebody um, really um, advocating for marginalized groups. Um, and we think that's super important. Um, so um, another one that I wanted to flag because uh, this is huge. As you can imagine, um, we have um, organizing 100,000 people in a space at once is going to be one hell of a task. We have action teams. Um, there's one uh, which is our logistics team and they are responsible for all of the, um, yeah, all of the logistics, uh, the, um, the structure, the, you know, um, the sound, if there's, if there's, there's stuff like that, the sustenance, the, um, the, lose the you know all of this sort of stuff they they really need somebody to come and help support them um again ned's going to drop a link in the chat um so anybody particularly somebody for example if you've had events management experience you've had festival management experience this is totally the role for you um they are also um uh, running the, so a couple of people have um, asked about accommodation. Um, this is the team that is organizing accommodation. It's a huge task. If you want to get involved, please do stick your hand up. Uh, the best place to do that is to come and join us in the Matmo space and just say, how do I get involved in the accommodation team? And somebody will help you. Um, really need all hands on deck for that. Um, so um, I think think am I being um am I handing over to action soon are you is am I finishing up I see yeah. Rob in your, yeah you're, no you're being you're, you're handing I think over to sorry it might be me making a bit of a pig's ear of this I'm actually okay. you're supposed to be handing over to Alex at Hazel sorry okay I did that no wrong. worries I thought I was maybe overrunning no 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 sorry, <laughs> you were to back me up <laughs> no, 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 you can if you can keep going if you want to. Sorry. All right. One to one more thing then very quickly that I will mention as another volunteering opportunity, which is absolutely open to everybody, could be done from home, could be done in a couple of hours a week or less. And that is um rebel ringing. You might have heard me talk about it before if you won the last open call. Um, super accessible, absolutely lovely thing to do. You are having um, it's basically calling our people who are already on our um, mailing list, who've given us their phone number, you're just not cold calling, and it's in, it's inviting them to, uh, to the action. It's helping them with the information they need. It is one of the most, the strongest mobilizing tools that we've actually got. And we 
are doing quite well for Rebel Ringers, but there's always room for some more. A very, very friendly community. So um, I will leave it at that because I think I've spoken enough and uh, I'm going to pass over to Alex. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about actions leading up to April. Um, so the rationale is that since we've stopped, um, we are putting a pause on um, disruption of the public as a primary tactic. Um, we're instead focusing our attention on the sectors of society that are propping up the status quo and um, resisting the transition to the society that we need. So we have four actions that we're referring to as pillars of power. Um, and so the first one is um, there is eight, there'll be 80 days to go. This is, so that's on Tuesday, the 31st of January, and that's targeting the justice system in many ways. Um, the second one is on 60 days to go. That's um, February the 20th. Um, that'll be focusing on the fossil fuel sector, oil and gas. And then 50 days to go focuses on finance. Uh, that's March the 2nd. And then 30 days to go, we focus on media. That's March 22nd. So I'll talk about um, the earlier ones more. Um, so 80 days to go, we focus on the justice system. So in London, we have an action um, with three main, me three main messages. Um, we aim to celebrate uh, legal cases around the world. Um, there's been a huge rise in... Um, cases brought against the worst polluters. And um, so we'll draw attention to those. And um, we also want to honor um, people that have been defending the earth, people and planet around the world um, and have experienced repression, uh, persecution, and in many cases have been killed. Um, so we'll talk about that um, both in the UK and globally. And then thirdly, we'll talk about the erosion of rights in this country. So that includes the right to protest, but also the right to strike. And um, the, the following day is February the 1st. And as Annie, Annie in the chat mentioned, um, there are huge strikes planned for that day, multi-sector strikes. And the trade union, the TUC, TUC has called this day as protect the right to strike day. So um, so what can local groups do? Um, we have some ideas for solidarity actions connecting to um, those themes, the, the themes of celebrating legal cases, honoring earth defenders and alerting members, people in the UK to um, erosion of their rights. Um, the, this could include vigils to um, prisoners, for example, in the UK. Um, we have an action pack that should be coming out on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then on web Wednesday, February the 1st, um, as Miranda said, it's really, really important for um, local groups, or it's especially important for local groups to make connections with um, strikers, which of course will be all over the country. So there's so many ways of doing that, and many of them will be mentioned in the training that she mentioned, which is coming up this week. Um, so just ideas are, um, you know, visiting picket lines and simply opening up conversations is enormously important. Um, taking banners or um, drums, things like that are great ideas. Um, getting your photo taken also is actually surprisingly important um, to, you can, you can uh, show off the fact that you did it and many more people will know about the fact that you did it um, if you broadcast it. And often that really creates a sense of community. Um, and then bigger, if if you have the, the um, energy, um, you could try to collect um, solidarity donations for union um, hardship funds. That's obviously huge. That's That would, you know, that really builds solidarity in a big way. Um, some local groups have organized um, events like fundraiser events and um, this can really, really help um, bring in lots of different, lots of different people. And as um, one of my colleagues described, um, it's particularly it's particularly when you can build a relationship between 
um, an organization like XR and like a and a, an organization that seems different. Um, so that's the idea that these um, actions are helping to helping to make these connections um, based on common cause. So the the second action that I should talk about is um, fossil fuels. Um, so the idea is that this will be related to the cut the ties action of November last year. So this was multiple targets um, of the, the web of different companies that facilitate the fossil fuel industry. So this includes advertising companies, PR companies, um, all sorts, there's all sorts of companies that often don't get a lot of attention. So we can really draw attention to those. And again, um, this is very much possible for local groups to um, come up with their own ideas. And um, so to create an action locally, which fits in um, nationally. So again, that's on February the 20th, which I think is a Monday. Um, these will probably, these actions will probably be spread out during that week. So um, yes, stay tuned for some more details on that. Um, I'll talk less about the other two actions. I think I'm in a, out of time, right? Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Alex, appreciate that. Um, I know we are running as usual about five minutes behind, but we're going for it. So next up it's uh, Lutra to talk about dirty water. Lutra, over to you if that's all right. Hi, thanks Etienne. Uh, the dirty water campaign, give me a hand up if you've heard of dirty water yet. This is interesting, this is good. So dirty water campaign has been serendipitously designed and unintentionally runs alongside 100 days with the same aims of engaging other groups who care about the environment and passionate about environmental degradation. Uh, as some of you know, we've already had deep water. There's been a series of protests by XR groups around the country um, regarding the state of the waterways, for example, the pollution of the River Wye. There's beaches that are covered in shit regularly, excuse my language, um, and our waterways are in serious decline. So we have devised a nationwide campaign called Dirty Water. It's a series of waves. We're going to be looking at all of the different groups that are responsible for the degradation of our waterways and our, and our seas and the pollution that's going into them. We have an action pack with a landing page. I'm hoping that that will get popped up in the chat soon. Thanks, Ned. Um, this is a campaign that's designed for rebels anywhere to take part in wave one. You don't need to be part of a local group. You can just go and do the blue plaque action. So wave one is we're targeting the, all the MPs in parliament. There was an amendment that was proposed by the Lords that would have forced water companies to clean up their act and to progressively reduce the amount of untreated sewage they were pumping into the rivers and the seas and the government knocked it down. I mean, there's no other way to say it. There was a, there was a, um, so there was a good thing in Brighton yesterday, if you're on the live action feed on Telegram, they did, they did the first action in this series of actions. It was already part of the plan as it were. So we're going to blue plaque all of our MPs. A lone rebel can go and stick it on a bridge, take a photo, upload it to our channel. We're going to set up a special channel for that in Telegram so that we can share all the blue plaques. But we're also encouraging people to go bigger and do grand unveilings of plaques, Put them, get them in the local press. We'll be doing press release writing and training for that. So we're really bringing it to the general public. People everywhere care about the state of our rivers. I went to a New Year's Eve party and somebody started talking to me completely out of the blue, didn't know I was in XR, talking about the state of the rivers. This is, this is something that's been in the press for the whole of the last year and will continue to be in the national press. Um, so we are go have a look at the action pack. There's loads of ideas in there. I'm just going to cover everything. Wave two, we're going to take it to the polluters. So we're going to talk about taking it to the water companies, the people that are polluting our waterways, whether they're intensive poultry units or whoever they are. 
Wave three, we're going to come back to Parliament during the big one in London, but we're designing it so that regional rebels who can't travel to London can also go back and target their MPs again. So we're going to go to government and say, what are you going to do about it? And then wave four will be in the summer where there's families on the beaches. You know, this isn't just an environmental issue. It's a public health issue. It's about saying that Parliament aren't looking after the general public and the, you know, the environmental degradation is a danger to us all. Um, it's designed as an entry level action. It's non XR branded initially because we want to engage all of the other river users, all the people who use the beaches. We're welcoming all of our sister movements like Oceans Rebellion, the medics, the scientists. Uh, we want you to go and talk to people that you know that use your rivers and your beaches, whether you're a wild swimmer like me, or you've got a kayak or a paddleboard, or your cousins do, or your friends at work do. Um, PCCs quite often have bits of rivers that run along their, their bit of the back boundary. There's a famous bridge near me that's run by the PCC. We want to get them on board. And because it's non XR branded, we're really hoping that this speaks to people who are on the edge of activism they're on the edge they don't know what to do they don't they're not really sure that they want to join XR, but they really want to do something so we're providing the framework for anybody to take action and say how angry they are about the state of our rivers um sorry somebody does pcc per uh, parish church councils so it's like if you're in a village they'll look after bits of the land around their around their um village as it were um, so there's an action pack which has loads and loads of information in it it's got loads of resources we've got flyers we've got stickers we don't want people to be put out financially because some local groups don't have very much money in their bank account so we have funding there's a link for that in the action pack and uh, what else do I need to say? I'm aware that we're running out of time. Sorry, guys. We have set, we are setting a time on this. The first wave of action is going to be the 28th of January. And we'd really love to get at least 100 plaques up around the country. And we're going to do a big media storm. We've got the press release writing training as well. So we would really like to see all those pictures. But this is, this wasn't designed to be part of 100 days, but it sits alongside beautifully with all the aims of 100 days to get all of these other groups um, engaged. So I hope that you find something in there that you want to do. Thank you, Etienne. Thank you, Lutra, Dirty Water, big up that, it's cool. Um, over to Rob, nice one, Rob. You're gonna talk a bit about the big one itself, I believe, over to you. Yeah, um, it's good to see everyone here. Uh, and I hope you can hear me. Um, do feel free, Etienne, if my internet gets a bit wobbly. Uh, I'm on a boat and sometimes it does, so I can I can cut off my video. Um, so the first thing I need to say is there is uh, a plan for disabled rebels. And so I just want to read that out very, very quickly um, because I've been told to here, which is to say, please spread the word that we are encouraging disabled people and people with other access needs to plan early. And as part of that, contact us to say how we can support their access needs by email or by phone signal. And those numbers will be in the chat in a moment. Um, so please do get, get in touch if you have any needs for anything. Um, I know there's been lots and lots of questions in the chat about the, the big one um, on April the 21st. And I'm afraid to say I'm not going to be able to give you um, detailed plans for each day. Um, it's it's a very, very hard thing to do. Uh, I'm sure you'll understand there's still quite a lot of movement, moving parts in the planning. I know that feels hard because we really want to to talk about it. So I'm going to talk in about a few things that we can say and that are that I think are really, really exciting. And the focus here is to try and bring 100,000 people who are not necessarily rebels. And in fact, what we are really hoping is that rebels will all step up into a role to facilitate the decision-making uh, power of these 100,000 people. So this is, this is trying to look different because it's not simply a demonstration. We're trying to go for a completely different vibe. And the other thing that we're trying to do is build momentum of these days. So if we are able to do that, if we're able to bring more people in, if we're able to bring energy to it, we absolutely should be able to build the number. Friday is, um, you know, Friday, the, the actually there, there is activity in Parliament, there are plenty of parliamentary groups that will be sitting on Friday. Um, and the Lords is in Parliament, as, as has been said. Um, 
and and then over the weekend there will be the marathon there was a question in the chat there are absolutely no plans to disrupt the London marathon there's quite a strong feeling that that would be an own goal um, in terms of what we're trying to achieve here which is to to bring a lot more people who over the past few years have been absolutely activated by the climate crisis and by uh, the work of Extinction Rebellion and other climate groups to have a voice, to start having a say and to start sharing that and to start doing it in an extremely public way and building on all of the incredible work that's been happening. It's another opportunity that we're giving for, for people to show their discontent. Um, and you've, we've seen that with the strikes, with these aligned strikes on February the 1st that are happening with all of these actions, all these different groups that are, are working to, to show that something really needs to be done. So this is uh, an opportunity and, and that's really what the big one is. It's trying to create an incredible vibe. Um, and, and one of the things that I can say here that we're working towards having, which is you are the first people to hear about this sort of publicly, is that we are working to have a space that would open in advance of uh, April the 21st. It would be a place in which people, not just from XR, could have trainings, could talk together, could come together, and also start to plan and work towards making this an absolutely successful um, event. So, so it's, it's not enough to just sort of turn up on, I hope everyone comes on the 21st, but there's only been a small group that's been really working on it because they happen to be nearby or whatever. In terms of the production, in terms of the art, in terms of the creativity, in terms of the programming, we, we are encouraging people who have time to come a little bit earlier and help with this setup. And we'd like people to be in that team. And as people have noticed, you know, 100,000 people is a lot. And to create an amazing atmosphere for that, we're going to need a lot of people on the ground making that amazing. Um, and, and after that, you know, it's, it's about creating possibility and creating momentum so that it can really turn into something powerful. And we don't know what will happen after that, but we're hoping that it will keep growing. And we do have a lot of plans in place to try and make that happen. So that's, that's really uh, what the big one is, is going to be about. It's going to be about giving that voice to people to choose their future and that new Extinction Rebellion that can kind of really harness that energy and share in it. Um, and that and that unity again an incredible thing I just want to leave is that unity it do, doesn't mean uniformity unity is is being able to come together and say that for a moment the dialogue and concentrating on being together in a space is more important than all the things in our tactical and strategic ideas that might separate us it's taking that moment to say that without dialogue we won't be able to have any change and the and the main message is, you know, you've, you've heard it in the demand, but it really is coming back down to democracy. And, um, and what's needed now is that we choose our future, which is that headline message. And, uh, and we didn't choose the cost of living crisis. We didn't choose the climate crisis. So maybe it's time that we did choose. And, and I think that's gonna be one of the key messages that we're trying to bring to people. Rob, thank you ever so much for that. And I really appreciate all the hard work of all the team here. Um, me standing in tonight gives me just a small insight as to how much, you know, probably coffee you lot are drinking, but also how much absolute hard heart grafting is going on out there. So I really want to say thank you to you all. And thank you to everyone for the questions. I am going to ask immediately, look, we're five to eight. We have run over by about 10 minutes. Uh, at least we wanted to give maybe 15, 10 minutes, 15 minutes questions for time for questions. Um, so I'm going to say we are, I'm going to invite and an offer. We can continue for another 10 minutes. We'll go for till 10 past eight, if that is okay um, with people. If you need to drop off, please, please do. Um, that's totally fine. We do want to respect your time, but we also had so much information here. Uh, we thought it's really important to get it out there. It can seem a little bit overwhelming, but there are a few important questions that I think we can try and pick off here that I think will be on the lips of many people. And um, I'm going to come to them now. I just want to quickly check in my notes, but I want to say, yeah, thank you, first of all, for everybody who's been here, ask questions, and we're going to go for it. So the first question I'm going to bring up, and this is for you, Hazel, uh, you put your name against it, it's about accommodation from Mark and Rose. And I think just anything that you can talk about accommodation would be really interesting, Hazel, I don't know if you can share anything you've got there it would be great. Um, the main thing that I've got to share on that is that there is a team working on it um, and they need people. Um, so uh, usually people, uh, you know, I would I would 
absolutely encourage anybody that's interested to, to come and help them out. That will be doing things like researching. Um, um, often we've spoken to churches about hiring church halls. Um, we've had other pub large public spaces that people can stay. We've got our human hotel. There's a whole range of ways that we try to help people um, find accommodation, but this is an even bigger task. So we need all hands to the pump. It's not, um, you know, you don't need particular skills, but please, if you're willing to help, come and join the Matamo space and we'll get you connected to the team. Thank you, Hazel. I think that's really important. So yeah, we're on the case, someone's on the case, and if it can be you that's on the case, join the team. Um, that'd be really cool. Next question I'm gonna hand is to Kat. And this question was from Teresa. And uh, it was about Teresa uh, Crouch, and to be precise, this was about transport to the big one on in London. Uh, Kat, have you got a bit of time to talk to people about that, please? I do. Uh, like accommodation, transport is something we know is really essential uh, to make actions like this as accessible as possible for as many people. Uh, I'm going to pop something in the chat right now. Um, this is a form that um, the people working on this are asking everybody and anybody who's interested in using this service to complete to give them a really good idea of what the needs are what needs to be provided and uh, what that might look like so i'll pop this in now it's gone in two parts for some reason uh but if anybody who's on the call tonight can fill that in i'd really appreciate that thank you cool thank you ever so much uh cat so yeah transport big big thing a lot of people thinking about that in my group as well um next question i'm going to put if it's okay to put it to you miranda this came from paul really early in the, the chat he put it on it said how can we find out which other organizations xr has engaged with and whether they're going to be involved so that we can engage with the local groups thinking here about groups like friends of the earth greenpeace just the ball green party and the list will probably go on so uh miranda i don't know if you're available to answer that question i'm I think you were trying to get your kids to bed earlier. Yeah. Still there. Um, yeah, I think I somewhat answered that actually um, when I spoke earlier. But um, um, we are not at a point where we publicly announce partnerships, but we are very, very close. And as I said before, um don't hesitate like they will only help our efforts like some more um concrete yet but very soon so just hold hold your nerve thank you for your patience you are breaking up a little bit in there uh Miranda, but i think the main line is to just try to hold your nerve everybody and just uh speak to people get those relationships built hopefully they can be used and we can um you know get people involved later um yeah okay next one i was going to ask uh was um okay yes uh cat i'm going to come back to you on this one um lois rumsey said it feels like a hundred days is trying to concentrate on too many areas and i guess if you've been in this call you've probably heard lots of things uh, but Kat, maybe you can help to clarify and maybe just, you know, there is a few things that we really need to focus on, right? Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot, uh, as you've heard tonight, uh, but be assured that it has been really well thought out and considered and does flow together in a plan, a cohesive path towards April 21st. It's a fine balance, as I'm sure you understand. Uh, we are in a crisis and we have a need to take action and we need to balance that against the time for everything else we need to do in order to prepare ourselves for April and beyond. Um, so it's a challenge, but one I hope we're rising to. Thank you, Kat. And I'm, while you're there, just to, don't go anywhere. And there was another question that I thought was interesting. And what's the main message to Parliament? How will we know if we're successful? So I think, you know, uh, Rob touched on a bit about the demand and all that sort of thing. But would you be able to speak to that? That's a question from Deborah. Thank you for putting that question in, Deborah. Yeah, absolutely. We will have positioned the government into a dilemma, either answer the public and the demands or ignore the will of the people, which will escalate further protest. 
Oh, I mean, now we know, you know, it's fairly simple. Just we're going to we're going to make ourselves heard and we're going to stay until we feel we have been heard. Um, right. I'm just trying to keep an eye. Thanks for all the questions. It's quite a list. Um, I'm going to try and get someone else to answer the question because I think Kat has been very brave and putting herself a lot. Um, so, yes, Rob, maybe you could be able to answer this question. This was from Teresa from Oxford. Um, I think you might have touched on this, but it might be good to be clear about it. So uh, they were saying uh, the aim is that we stay at Parliament Square, I think, for as long as it takes. So should we be encouraging people to stay and should they be bring tents, food? What sort of infrastructure will there be for this? I guess some of these questions are being grappled with. Rob, have you got anything to say about those maybe? Uh, yeah, so at the moment we're, I mean, it's it's really it's really hard to say because there are talks undergoing with different different groups and what this should look like is still slightly there's still some moving elements to it um what we can say is that you know a lot of people coming from outside of london we are really looking at the moment at finding accommodation and and a campsite because if we do get 100,000 people and 50,000 come from outside london we're going to need space um, we might not be able to find enough beds, you know, um, so we are looking at that. We don't know yet. Um, we're thinking because of how we're sort of planning this thing around with the marathon and who we have to speak to. At the moment, it's looking like we're going to withdraw in the evenings. Um, uh, and that's and that's kind of still in play. We're looking at that. So it wouldn't necessarily be camping on the streets. And, and it's been said before that that aesthetic of sort of tents on the streets, um, which happened a lot in October 2019, um was was quite a you know didn't wasn't an attractive and, and sort of building vibe although people at the time really you know were were invested in that and i was there too and very invested in that so there's there are still a few moving parts about it but we're gonna you know we'll, we'll we will update as soon as we've got some more concrete stuff especially around accommodation and transport because we know that's what people need to know soonest Thank you ever so much, Rob. Um, I've got a question here. This is, should be a fairly quick one from Dave and Estelle. This is about the trade union outreach training on the 19th. So Miranda, I don't know if you can answer this question. Um, will that outreach training for tra about trade unions be recorded? And maybe is there other, other uh, outings for it so that people miss that one, they can find out what's going on. Uh, Miranda, are you there? Oh, I think Miranda's internet isn't so working. Uh, what I would recommend if it's not going to yeah. come through, oh, I can smell. Yeah. Oh, go on, Miranda, you're going to try. Yes. Um, well, so we have trade unions. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it'll be recorded. We've got um, speakers from XR trade unionists. It will be recorded. They also do picket line trainings of their own sometimes, and there'll be an opportunity to sign up to their action network as well. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, right then, let's see where else we're going. Um, OK, this is another one um, for Kat. Um, Emma was saying, you know, I feel like people need inspiration and a clear picture of exactly what this demo looks like before we get all to this detail. Um, there's a lot of detail. And uh, Emma, it, you said it was a bit dull. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to go over to, I think Frida's got a hand up, but uh, Frida, do you, want to, do you want to speak to this? And then I'll come to Kat because she had a name next to this question. And oh, I might sorry, I, I didn't realise we were supposed to put our names next to questions. I just want to say that um, I just shared a document in the chat, which has like ways of uh, summarising what's going to happen in April to people in one minute, three minutes and 10 minutes. I think that's linked to in the 3.5 handbooks. I'll make sure it is. Uh, so that's definitely something you can make use of. But I would also just just say, like, from having done outreach and having tried this, <clears throat> especially on the streets, people won't, won't ask you for loads and loads of details okay, of, like, okay, what time do I need to be there and where the toilet's going to be and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, you explain the rationale of the, the action. And when people say, like, oh, what are we going to be doing? It's like, oh, we're going to surround Parliament. We're going to hold people in Parliament accountable. There's going to be lots of different performances, lots of different things that people can do. And we're going to return day after day. And that's 
that that's plenty of information to be honest most people won't ask for much more than that and if people have more questions you can always say look you know i don't know the answer to your question but if you sign up here you'll receive lots more information about um the actions as they come in um so yeah i know it doesn't feel it doesn't feel very satisfying but uh, in my experience, that that is plenty of information for people to get on with. I think most people don't expect like a massive ten page information about a protest before they attend a protest. If you see what I mean, normally you just need like a headline. Thank you, Frida. Kat, I don't know if you had the chance to uh, come back in on that question uh, about from from Emma saying this all sounds a bit grinding. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, whoever said activism was glamorous? Um, the reality of anything we do as a movement is hours and hours of sometimes stressful, sometimes mind numbing hard work behind the scenes, all of which is absolutely necessary to see the joyful and inspiring coming together on the streets. Um, for something as big as this, we need all of us, all of us to do the boring bits, to do the dull bits, to read the document and do the work, uh, because without the boring bits, there is no action and there is no change. So pick a dull role and dive in. Thank you, Kat. I, I just want to sort of second that. And I think that a lot of hard work is often not super glamorous, but we are beyond the glamour days. We are now, you know, our one of our principles values, we we do what is necessary in Extinction Rebellion. And I'm I'm personally calling on every single one of you and upon myself to try to find find what it is that you can do and you know to dig deep for these next it's 95 days so um i'm gonna have to call an end to the uh 100 sorry the 100 days no 95 days no we're calling end to the q a right now uh because we are over time um i want to say thank you to everybody who's come along everyone who's answered questions everyone who's asked questions thank you to the team um if you want you can save the chat all this information will be out there somewhere please 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 um just get out there, do your best. Um, we can do no more. The simple fact is we need, just need to get people into the game and realize that they have a pathway to change. But if now you'll be okay, let's unmute ourselves and create a cacophony of pride of being awesome people trying to save the planet for the future and see you all on the streets. Well done, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hey, guys. 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 Hey, guys.